Well, the shunt first. Who was to blame, Max or Lando? I'm probably the wrong person to ask because I've, I've been going on and on and on how the, there's a disconnect between the sporting regulations, which basically say you always have to give the guy on the outside room, and what we all know to be the true essence of motor racing and owning a corner. And it's the guy on the inside who owns a corner. We all know that. And yet somebody has written this rule in the sporting regulations to say that if you're on the outside, it behoves the driver on the inside to give you lots of room and not to run you wide. And if he does, he's the one that gets a penalty. That's basically it. And that's driven me up the wall. It's probably driven a lot of people up the wall. Carlos Sainz too, I think, uh, over the years. But in reality, that wasn't what this Austrian Grand Prix shunt was all about. The one that gave the victory to George Russell and Mercedes. And congratulations to George and Merck straight off the bat. But just getting back to the shunt, because that was the defining moment, quite obviously. The build up to it, we'll get on to in, in a minute down, down the road in this video. Suffice to say that Max was now on a scrub set of medium tyres, Lando was on a new set, and there's a big difference in performance between the two at that stage of the race on relatively light fuel. And Max had also lost about four seconds in a very delayed, nasty pit stop, left rear jammed, left rear wheel nut jammed. And he came out, instead of coming out of the pit lane with about a five to six second lead over Lando, which would have been enough for him to have won the race, even though he was on, on scrubbed medium tyres. He came out with Lando in his mirrors. And at that moment, because Austria has three DRS zones, it's a very compact circuit, he was a sitting duck. So it was going to be fascinating from that moment, I thought, to see how Max was going to win that race. Because he couldn't even imagine that Max Verstappen wasn't going to win the Austrian Grand Prix. The home race of Red Bull, he'd been leading from the start, he was on the pole, he won the sprint race, he was on the pole for the sprint race, the whole thing. And yet, there seemed to be no way Lando wasn't going to win it, because he had three DRS zones and a new set of tyres. And the McLaren was patently quicker in terms of grip, and he was certainly obviously not going to lose in a straight line because of DRS, than the Red Bull. So what happened? Well, what happened was there was a sort of mix and match and confusion, all induced by DRS, massive approach speeds, huge speed differentials, which resulted in Lando, even if he wasn't really trying, just arriving at the braking area, I don't know, 10, 15 kilometers an hour quicker than Max Verstappen, and then sort of scrabbling around. And a couple of times he was down the inside at turn three, which was obviously one of the overtaking places, three DRS zones, that's the end of the, the first DRS zone. And he ran wide and, and got sort of ahead, and then he had to give the position back to Max, which he duly did. Then he tried it at the end of the back straight going into four, and it didn't kind of work there. And, and so he was kind of left in this thing where, yeah, maybe it's going to have to be into turn three. And approaching turn three, they're doing what? 300 kilometers an hour. It's very, very quick bit of road. It's very high speed braking because you're braking down to a very slow speed corner. And that's where the big advantage from DRS comes into play. So he's got this huge speed advantage. And I think on the lap in which the accident happened, lap 63, and the, the race was going through to lap 77. I think on that lap, Lando was thinking, OK, I won't dive bomb him. What I'll do here is basically stay on the outside and I'll try and do an undercut coming out of three and I'll be in perfect position then to DRS him on that top straight and then get him into four. And that'll be the cleanest way of doing it. And that's, that would have worked for sure. The problem is the regulation because Max, how is Max going to defend given the way the regulations are written and given that he's a racing driver that wants to win the Austrian Grand Prix and defend as racing drivers want to defend. I think Max, until that point, and even then, did a very good job. He was kind of in the middle of the road whenever he was likely to be passed by Lando with a huge speed differential. And he always moved at exactly the moment that was coincidental with potentially moving a little bit to the outside for the corner ahead, just a fraction, just enough to, to unsettle Lando. That caused Lando to get on the radio to say, oh, he's moving in, in response to my move, and that's incredibly dangerous, that shouldn't be allowed. But of course, Max was doing it really well and, and doing it beautifully. Going into this uh, on the lap in question, though, 63, going into turn three, Max was doing his usual thing. He braked perfectly, Break, break perfectly, even though he didn't have the same grip level as Lando. Didn't lock up or anything. He was on the inside. He was on the middle of the road, but sort of had the corner protected. And again, he was making it clear that if Lando was going to pass in there, he was going to have to do it on the outside. There wasn't enough room on the inside. 
And Lando duly went up on the outside this time. And as I say, I, I suspect his thinking was, I'll do an undercut here and on exit. And if you closely study Max's onboard, he doesn't actually move to the left at all. What is actually happening is that the track is angled slightly to the left there. He keeps absolutely straight on the steering. It looks as if he's moving to the left, which is possibly what the stewards are looking at. But if you look at his steering angle, he doesn't change anything. He keeps in a straight line. I think the real problem is that Lando's carrying the speed differential is artificially big because of DRS. Lando didn't need to be catching him at that rate when they're on hard brakes and he's not trying to overtake him because all he wanted to do was do an undercut coming out on the exit. And that, that was the problem. And all of a sudden he got this speed differential and the track's going slightly to the left. Lando's just sort of here. He's not going over the curb on the left. And they just touch right front, left rear at Red Bull hit Lando's right front. Instant puncture for the Red Bull and an almost instant puncture for the McLaren. Uh, and then a retirement for the McLaren. He then got the penalty for moving the steering to the left, which was all a bit odd. And it's even more odd because virtually, as I've been talking at the beginning of this video, a ruling has come in from the FIA stewards about a penalty for Lando Norris. I mean, first of all, I should say Max got that penalty. Not that it makes any difference to his race. He finished fifth in the end uh, on a new set of soft tyres. But this is coming now. And bear in mind that on lap 58, we heard Lando's race engineer get onto the radio to say, you're in, right, you're in right on the edge on track limits, Lando. Be very careful on track limits. You've had the black and white flag, which means as a warning, you will have no other warnings. Apparently, after that, Lando then exceeded track limits again. Nothing to do with the skirmish with Max. Nothing to do with running wide and then giving the position back. This is all just Lando on his own going over a track limit uh, because it's timed at 1612 which was laps 58 ish around there so yeah long before they've had that shunt or anything like that lando this is what it says infringement breach of article 33.3 five second time penalty for lando norris stewards reviewed video evidence and found that car four lando norris left the track on four occasions without justifiable reason after having received the black and white flag on the third occasion this is a breach of blah, blah, blah. So here's the news. If that decision had been made, and that decision was made after the end of the race, that was published after the end of the race, but we knew there was some investigation going on. If that decision had been published, obviously, or given out during the course of the race, Max Verstappen would have won the Austrian Grand Prix because he would have just let Lando pass with his five second penalty and followed in the DRS and finished you know, a few seconds behind him and won the race. Incredible, eh? What a twist that is to this Grand Prix, to this very volatile Austrian Grand Prix. And if that's not enough, there was another incident which if, if Red Bull and, and Max feel slighted that they were given a penalty for that incident with Lando, which resulted in effectively both losing the race, either of them could have won that race. If they feel slighted by that, then I think they should feel lucky that they didn't get a penalty for an unsafe release of Max from his second pit stop. The pit stop when he went on to his set of scrub mediums and it was halted by, it was delayed by that left rear wheel nut. I say that because Lando gets on the radio and, and I think the TV proves this to be the case. Lando gets on the radio to say that I had to come out of the throttle to avoid Max as he pulled out in front of me. I couldn't turn into my box until he'd pulled out in front of me. And to my mind, that was an unsafe release an unfair and unsafe release by Red Bull for Max Verstappen, obviously brought about by the delayed pit stop anyway and, and the panic that inevitably ensues because of that. And although that did go to the stewards, no further action has been taken. And I think Red Bull should feel quite relieved about that because to me, it's quite lucky they didn't get a penalty. And the reason they didn't get a penalty, interestingly, is that car one, Max Verstappen, was released from his pit stop station when car four was approaching. There is a possibility that car one hindered car four on its approach to the pit stop. However, Article 3414A specifies that a car is considered to be released in an unsafe manner if it could endanger pit lane personnel or another driver. This was not the case and therefore no further action is taken. Now, I think that's a very grey area because presumably, and, and this is it's a pretty strong argument, is it not, that Lando Norris and McLaren could easily argue that if Lando had just done what he would have done 
in normal circumstances, if Max hadn't been there at all, he would have hit the Red Bull. And if it hit the Red Bull, it would have endangered pit personnel and it might have endangered a driver as well. So I don't buy that, to be honest. I, I think the stewards did the right thing by the letter of the regulations in giving Max the penalty for that shunt. But I don't think, I don't agree with that. I think, I think Red Bull were very lucky to get away with that from that pit stop. So, yeah, there we are. I think, you know, I don't want to detract from George Russell winning a Grand Prix for Mercedes this year. And congratulations to George on his second Grand Prix win and to Mercedes for getting that win. He was in a very good P3. Well, P3 for most of the race, a very good P3 off the line. Had a bit of a fight with Lewis Hamilton for a lap or two. Lewis actually passed him. Then George immediately repassed him. DRS. And, but George, after that, was pretty clean and did a really good job. He did the last stint, interestingly, on a new set of hard tires. And, <laughs> well, before I get on to that, the detail of why he ran those hard tires, let's just talk about what the build-up to how Lando and Max were so closely matched. Well, not closely matched, actually. How that situation arose at the back end of the race. Because... The problem was for Max was twofold. One, he was on a scrub set of mediums and Lando was on a new set of mediums. Big difference in performance. And two, he'd lost all that time in that delayed pit stop. So all of a sudden he was under pressure and he didn't have the same grip level, unlike any other phase of the race, as the McLaren right now. So you'd be thinking, yeah, you know, where is, where is it? How did that happen? Why is Max not on a new set of mediums? Well, the answer to that, of course, is, and if you remember the video I did on Friday, I was going on and on about how Lewis Hamilton was doing all these runs on the hard tyre, these fuel runs on the hard tyre, and everybody else was out trying the soft or the medium, which were the tyres that were going to be used in sprint qualifying and obviously would define the grid for the sprint. And I was saying, you know, I was amazed that Mercedes didn't put either driver on the soft or the medium. They did two laps with George on the soft, but not a, no, neither driver ran a medium tyre. Whereas, interestingly, Red Bull did run a new set of mediums on Max and Sergio Perez's car, almost uniquely. So a couple of others at the back did, but amongst the front runners, Red Bull were the only team on Friday morning to run a new set of mediums out of the pit lane for the entire session. Everybody else ran hard tyres. And I suspect that's because Red Bull, knowing the circuit well and being very good on preparation and where they're going with strategy, I think it's because Red Bull thought that the way to win this race was going to be medium off the line and then two sets of new hard tyres. And I think that's why they used those mediums in that first bit on Friday. The problem came early in the race on Sunday when Charles Leclerc had a very messy opening lap and came in with damage on the car and came in uh, on medium tyres and came in uh, and they put him on a new set of hards thinking well he's you know he's lost the race but we might as well put him on hard tyres and just get him to run as long a stint as he can and pick up track position and the interesting thing is that after about five laps Charles was saying these tyres are terrible there's no grip at all and they brought him in after 15 laps and put him on a set of mediums their only remaining new set of mediums and then after that two scrub sets of mediums that's how desperate they were never to run the hard tyre and that reverberated right down the pit lane and all of a sudden everybody was not panicking a few teams were panicking red bull for sure that the hard tire on this sunday afternoon was not the way to go and almost immediately lando's engineer got on the radio to say lando keep going keep pushing we got a really good chance in this race because we've got two new sets of mediums red bull have only got one so at the first pit stop both lando and Max went to new set of hards, no problem. But the issue for Red Bull was what to run for that last stint because they had another new set of hards, but only a scrub set of mediums. Lando Norris had another set of mediums. And because Lando at the end of that stint was still within striking distance of, of, of Max, seven to eight seconds, not enough for it really to be an easy gap, Red Bull felt obligated to have to put Max on a set of medium tires. It was a scrub set. And I think because they knew Lando had that new set of mediums, they couldn't take the risk of putting him back on a hard, on a hard compound tire, running two sets of hard. Indeed, there was a bit of a cameo in this race where towards the end of the second stint when Max was running out of grip on his hard tire. And maybe, the, and he lost the rear on the hard, so maybe that's another reason that Red Bull decided to put him on those scrub mediums for the third stint. Anyway, he was running out of grip on those hard tires. And he passed both Haas Ferraris, lapped them, but then they stayed with him. Their tires were newer at that point and they're very quick in a straight line. And a couple of times Max got on the radio to say the problem are the two guys behind. 
by which he meant the two Haas Ferraris and how uncomfortable it was for him to be constantly seeing them in his mirrors and having to worry about them and whether they're going to repass him under DRS, obviously. It just shows, again, the whole unsettling thing of DRS coming into play in, in unexpected ways. You'd normally not expect that to be an issue. But uh, from Max's point of view, I think he found that very uncomfortable that he just passed these two cars. Now, here they were because of DRS. They, were, you know, they, they didn't get passed in the end, but it meant Max had to put a little bit more into those tyres and through the energy of the tyres than he would have liked. But not detracting, of course, from any job that uh, Nico and Kevin did. They did a really good job in that car. Now, the interesting counterpoint to that is that George Russell ran a new set of hards for that last stint, uniquely amongst all the top runners. And it was a very good tyre for him. It put him, put him in a position where he'd suddenly got the lead of the race. There was quite a lot of pressure from Oscar Piastri, a little bit from Carlos Sainz, both of whom were on medium tyres. Oscar's slightly newer than Carlos Sainz's. And, and Oscar was always going to be quick. He just had a really scrappy opening lap when he actually he'd got a drama. He had a first corner drama with Charles Leclerc and then ran wide out of turn four. Well, Sergio Perez ran him wide out of turn four uh, and he dropped about four places, but he recovered beautifully and was in really strong position. And I think that hard tire was absolutely the right compound for George to have over the last two or three laps when he could rely on it. There was no way it was going to go away or start graining and he could lean on it if he needed to. So it was a great call by Mercedes. And here I have to re reflect also back to Friday when, if you recall, I gave Mercedes a really a pretty hard time, not a really hard time, a pretty hard time for running Lewis on so many laps with fuel on that hard tire. Well, guess what? That was probably what gave Mercedes the confidence to run that hard tyre, even though Charles Leclerc had been trashing it early on in the race. It was that homework on Friday with Lewis Hamilton that won the race for George Russell. You could know. I mean, that's, that's obviously a bridge much too far. I'm just saying that to wind up all the Lewis fans. But no, I, I think it was indeed. They did a lot of laps. They knew that hard tyre very well. And I think now the conundrum that Red Bull will have is twofold. One, had they known about Lando, Lando's penalty, the shunt would never have happened and they would have won the race. And two, look how well George did on that hard tyre in the last stint. So maybe they should have run the hard anyway on that last stint. Not that it would have made that much difference because of the poor pit stop and the time they lost, but maybe it would have just changed things around a little bit. Maybe that scrub medium was not a great tyre for Max to be on for at least the first three or four laps. Certainly his first lap out of the pits after putting that tyre on into turn four, he had a massive lockup. And I think it was that massive lockup, great view Lando had of it too, going into four, which is always a downhill right-hander. He had that view. And I think from that moment, Lando felt, wow, I can win this Grand Prix. I just got to get past the guy. And that lockup said a lot too. Would he have had that lock-up on the, on the new hard? Probably not. So it, was, it all came back to Friday. There was a mixture of strategies. It came also down to DRS. And, the, and, and I've been saying for a long time we don't need DRS with these cars. It is easier to, to follow them. But much more significantly, I think, and nobody ever talks about this, the toe is actually quite pronounced with these cars even without DRS as shown by Max Verstappen in the sprint race. Yeah, great pass by Max on Lando in the sprint race, but he didn't have DRS and he did the pass. He used the toe as a traditional old school racing driver would use without DRS. And that, that's an art that's kind of gone now because DRS just hands everything to you. But what is it actually handing now? It's handing as Lando would be the first to uh, agree with. It's landing you with an unbelievable speed differential advantage. It's not actually handing you a pass. It's handing you the speed differential pass uh, advantage. And it's happening in the case of that first DRS zone in Austria. It's happening from very high speed. Let's call it 300 kilometers an hour into very heavy braking into a tight right hander where lots of things can happen. And if you've got a big speed differential, you can carry that into a braking area. But you're going to be almost a passenger in terms of how slow the other car is going to be going. You, even if you don't try to brake too late, there's going to be a massive speed differential. And it was almost like a sort of traffic jam thing going into turn three that it eventually resulted in that shunt. It wasn't Lando trying to overtake necessarily. I think he was just wanting to be there to get the run on the inside on exit. And it wasn't Max aggressively shutting a door, which is a sort of traditional way of preventing someone overtaking you. It was Max on the inside kind of doing it 
correctly. You know, at what point does the, do the sporting regulations say that as you approach a corner, you're not allowed to move the steering wheel two degrees to the left in order just to give you a little bit of an exit? You can't write that into the rule book. And I think one of the problems is they've got this rule, which is in complete disconnect with the reality of motor racing and what racing drivers do. So George, very good job. Mercedes, very good job. They, the car wasn't as quick as obviously over the lap as the Red Bull or the McLaren, but George got the most from it. As I say, he had a bit of a, a, a battle with, with Lewis. Lewis got a DRS pass quite early on, and then George immediately DRSed him back and then pulled away. And Mercedes, to their credit, stuck to their guns with that choice of tyre for, for George as well. P2, Oscar Piastri, that scrappy opening lap, but very quick at the end and good result for him, very good result. But in P3, Carlos Sainz, a little bit unlucky. His tyres were slightly older than Oscar, his medium tyres were slightly older than Oscar's. He passed Carlos after George had taken the lead, after that shunt, which is a little bit disappointing. It would have been nice to have seen Carlos defending a bit more aggressively. But then again, you know, we live in this DRS world. And from Carlos's point of view, he was kind of on the edge of where he could be with the tyres. And there was a podium there for Ferrari, the first one since uh, since Monaco. So he had to go for that and just make sure he brought the car home. So he did a good job. P4 Lewis Hamilton, who had an up and down race. He was kind of there with George early on. And he would feel now disappointed, of course, that the wind didn't come his way. Particularly given all that fuel running he did on Friday morning on the hard tyre. But he did get a penalty. He got a 10 second penalty for crossing over the white entry line into the pit lane probably due to a late call and but there was a lovely sort of Terry Neuville moment Neuville moment when he realized that he had to come in and did one of these and <laughs> Mercedes is kind of on opposite lock so he comes into the pit lane looked pretty cool but he got a penalty for going over the white line um, Max was fifth with his penalty and six and eighth were Haas Ferrari with Nico Hulkenberg and Kevin Magnussen fabulous day for them great performance uh, by both drivers and by the team in general. Ever since Ao Komatsu has taken over, uh, it's looked a different team, really, isn't it? Very, very good. Uh, they sandwiched Sergio Perez, who just went round and round, as ever, as he has done this weekend, complaining about understeer. Daniel Ricciardo, a very good ninth. Congratulations to him in front of the Red Bull crowd. And P10, very good drive by Pierre Gasly. Again, a very fraught battle with his teammate, Esteban Ocon, who'd kind of looked quicker, slightly quicker all weekend. And, uh, but... In the, uh, when it came down to the race, Pierre got the run, he got the DRS run, and there was a big drama between the two of them. Uh, coming out of turn three, no real surprise there. Esteban finished 12th in the end, and Charles Leclerc was 11th after all those pit stops and all that drama in the first lap. And so what a day. They've been very close, as I say, Max and Lando, in these last couple of races. And eventually, I suppose, it all had to come to an end. Bit of a shame it did so in the way it happened, but congrats to to George on his win and to Mercedes. A lucky win, obviously, but at the same time, they were there to uh, to pick up the pieces, the debris from the punctures and the bodywork as Max and Lando drove back to the pit lane. I blame DRS for all of this, most of it anyway, and I think the decision made by the stewards probably okay. I think Red Bull, they lost on one decision. They may think they lost on one decision, but certainly they gained on another. And from McLaren's point of view, yeah, just, very unlucky. Uh, I think Lando could have won that race easily had he pulled off the pass that he was just about to execute, the one coming out underneath Max, coming out of three. So very unfortunate for Lando. But he'll be, he'll be fine after this. Next race is Silverstone, home crowd, British Grand Prix, and he'll be loving all this, as will George Russell. I mean, Silverstone ticket sales have been down a little bit. Wow. George Russell goes and wins the Austrian Grand Prix. Lando Norris has a shunt with Max Verstappen for the lead. What a build-up. Big thanks to Jetcraft, to OEM Exclusive, and to Track Ninja, and to you, of course, for watching. See you very soon.